On this episode of Urban U, jumpstart your AI and machine learning skills with Borough of Manhattan Community College, where a six-month training boot camp teaches essential skills in two of the most coveted tech fields globally. Meet two students with big dreams for a project that they started with the help of the Baruch College Entrepreneurship Club, a clothing line called On the Fair. Did you know that award-winning actor Luis Guzman has a CUNY connection? CUNY's Center for Puerto Rican Studies, also known as Centro, happens to have an archive that includes photos of the actor from over 40 years ago when he was a social worker in New York City. That and more, welcome to Urban U. Because AI is coming, it's going to be it's big now. It's, it will be bigger is in the future. Don Wei is chair of Computer Information Systems at Borough of Manhattan Community College. He says BMCC is on the cutting edge of making community colleges part of the growing tech movement into artificial intelligence. He says with a nudge from President Anthony Monroe, Wei developed an AI machine learning boot camp. We create two boot camps. One is for faculty members who is for professional development in the area of AI. The other one is we feel that students can benefit from the boot camp so that we also create a boot camp for students. Computer science major Florian Charles won a hackathon. As a prize, he was automatically enrolled in the AI boot camp. Everyone talks about AI, but when AI is the first thing that you hear, ChatGPT is on your head. So you don't really know what AI is at. It has to be more than ChatGPT, but you don't really know. The bootcamp for me, it was more of a way to like know the different parts of AI and what AI is actually is, the different implication, what we could do with it. And for me, I took it as something, okay, I didn't know about AI like that, aside from ChatGPT, let me learn about it and see if that's something I would want to see myself doing in the future. Pingbo Young participated and also assisted in teaching the boot camp. One project she undertook involved making a chatbot that uses AI. This is what I made last year. I got a question searching chatbot for the student to search you the schedule of the BMCC, so they could search about when is the uh, holidays off, when is the school gonna be end, when is gonna be the days for drop off the class. So it's kind of something like that. Professor Wei says he wants students to have the skills to get jobs in AI right out of BMCC. That's why the two week crash course results in a certification recognized by tech businesses. Computer science actually prepares students either transfer for four-year college or try to, try to get an entry-level job if possible. Now, to get an entry-level job, no matter which major, we are competing with four-year college. So my thinking is, if the students can pass and certify by an industry-recognized certification, then they, they can show their skills and also they can show their credit. So they, therefore, if they want to find an entry-level job or internship, then they have more opportunity to, uh, to get that, to get. So that's the purpose of this certification is to give them benefit, credit, so they can either transfer or can get an entry-level job. A 2021 paper from Georgetown University's Center for Security and Emerging Technology stated, four-year college is a common pathway for many AI jobs. However, a sizable share do not have four-year degrees, particularly in non-technical occupations. Citing this paper, the liberal think tank New America argues that more investment should be made in AI training for community college students. Wei says getting students those jobs involves working with the tech sector. So one way we want to train students theory, the other way we want to embed it. The industry recognized lab like Microsoft, Amazon, or Google, embed the lab into our program. So when the student finish the program, not only do you have, they have essential theory understanding, but also they can be certified by the industry-recognized certification like Microsoft, 
Amazon and Google. Not too many, not too many colleges, community colleges, provide AI programs. Wei says he's working on a proposal for three AI and machine learning courses that are applicable in industry. For Urban U, this is Shannon Ayala. I wanted to learn how to start a business, right? And when I joined, they initially wanted to start a clothing brand, and I thought, you know, this is a pretty cool idea. So Jamina Drabo joined forces with Renuk Paul in the Baruch College CEO Club and made that cool idea a reality. They wanted their line to be high quality but affordable, something versatile enough for students to wear to class, on an interview, or on the job. When we were trying to figure out like where to position ourselves as a clothing brand, we wanted something elegant, something business casual, something that stands out. And for me, I figured I'm the fair. I'm the fair means people in business in French. So that really relates to what we're trying to do as a brand. We didn't really know what we were getting into when starting Om Fair. We wanted to open our own businesses. We were both interested in fashion. That's why we took the opportunity for Om Fair, but we didn't know where to start, how to, we just knew that we needed to build a team and we learned from there. The reason why I joined CEO in the first place as a freshman three years ago was because I really liked their structure of you know running as a club because they focus on the hands-on experience and that was something important to me right we had designers from FIT come in during our meetings and provide different prototypes of like how we kind of envisioned the, the, the type of design we wanted there was professional people from Apple we work and Dropbox who came to the CEO events and they spoke and we got to ask them questions we got to learn about their experience of how they work in their companies and we can see if anything that they told us can apply to Omda Fair. In fall of 2022 we did a winter marketplace where we launched our winter collection. We also won a $400 grant, small business grant, and with that spring of 2023 we launched a spring collection and we hosted a fashion show. We had student performers, student musicians, student models, because me and Jamina, we're students, we're just juniors. And so we have, um, we keep students in mind. 100 people came inside the center and the door was still open. People were still watching from outside. The seats were all filled up and people were just, they, they rather stand. So they were standing watching models go in. So that really shows the connection that we're actually making with students. We're not just some big entity, like out of nowhere. We're actually making that face-to-face um, -face connection with our audience. Today, Umdefair is thriving with additional sales on their website and a big social presence. But there definitely has been a learning curve. We had to learn while doing, right? Going back to the drawing board, okay, this is not working. What should we do? What should we try? And I think that's what it is as a student, right? We have all these resources for us to you know, try on and just figure out, fail as much as we want to, and also just, you know, just have fun with it. Running a business is not a straight line or else like you're being stagnant and there's no growth. There has been ups and downs, things that me and Jamina had to reevaluate our, um, our own process of how we do on that fair and some things that we have to agree on and come to a consensus. If you don't fail, you're not learning, and if you're not learning, you're not growing from it, right? And because we want, we do have a vision of where the clothing brand, you know, is going to be, like, I think that is something that also keeps me going. What have each of you learned from this experience? It made me grow in seeing who I can actually become. 
I have this confidence about myself. I have this confidence to speak up for myself because I realize that I am doing a lot. I, I can do this, I can run the business and I, I deserve to have my voice heard. So confidence and being myself to express myself is something that I've learned from Um Dafir and I, I am very grateful for it. We have a story to tell and we want to make sure that like everyone knows about it. We are student-born, student-led, woman-owned and woman-led and we strive to bring business casual attire to every single student and professional in the world. This experience is very important and will continue to be important for us because then we'll continue to develop more skills, we'll continue to learn from it. And I think that's what's life about, right? Trying out things and learning from it and just, I guess, growing from it. I don't really think we're really fashionistas, but yeah, we're businesswomen because of Um Da Fair. I'm Scott Kirby for Urban U. I am from Miami, Florida, and at the age of 16, I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma. It's a rare bone disease. Cancer never really changed my personality or the way I view life in itself. It just gave me more inspiration and more determination to seek out my goals. I love school because anyone could take anything away from me, but no one could take away my knowledge and my education. I found Bronx Community College and I was already enrolled with all my classes and everything within a week and about three months later I found out I was four months pregnant. His name is Troy and he is the light to my eyes. Amazing. I love him. I transferred to Lehman last fall. When I first visited the Student Life Building, I met a friend and that's when my involvement with student government started. I am so passionate of helping others. However, there's a time and a place for everything. We are currently living in a shelter and even having two or three jobs is not helping me make it because I have to worry about taking care of my son, putting him through school. Um, I have to put myself through school too and according to the system, I make too much money. So I do use the food pantry. It seems impossible, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And if you have a goal, just go for it. What do you have to lose? This is absolutely amazing, and I'm really happy and proud that, you know, our history is being preserved. Guzman is referring to one of Cento's archives that showcases Charas El Bohillo Cultural and Community Center on the Lower East Side, an organization that Guzman worked for as a social worker and community organizer 40 years ago. I gotta tell you something, like I remember being in high school and you're studying world geography and you got like a 400 page book and when it talks about our people, it's a paragraph and no pictures. And to walk into a room like this, it's like, wow, we come a long way from that one paragraph. I mean, we have an incredible archive of, of our history here. And I really hope people take advantage of it because we have a really beautiful history and a beautiful past. And um, it's just really informative, very, again, very inspiring to me. And how did the work that you did with Charas, how did that inform and inspire the person you are now, especially in your career? Well, you know, you influenced by people like, you know, Chino Garcia and Edgar Rivera and, and Angelo Gonzalez and Armando Perez and Carlito Baez and Angie Hernandez, I, you know, because I got to drop names here, right? And, um, you know, people like Bimbo Rivas and Bobo and Sally. You know, they, they were a big part of my foundation of, of teaching me. Again, inspired me to do what we did in our community, for our community. I was inspired by some wonderful people back in the neighborhood back in the day, so. And I still am inspired by those people today. Centro, which manages several activism collections, is proud of the records that showcase Puerto Rican history, especially those archives that show everyday people's lives. I was very um, 
uh, fulfilling for me to see him be very surprised, actually. He didn't know that this collection was here, as often happens. You know, we just live our lives. We forget about the documentation that we leave behind. And then suddenly here you are uh, many, many years later and you find yourself in an archive. He has been a community activist for, men for a long time because he's Puerto Rican. So it's really not a coincidence. It didn't just happen. It was very um, on purpose because we have been collecting this for many years. He's not in this collection because he's famous. He was in this collection because he's part of the Lower East Side and the Puerto Rican community. We really had to put up the good fight, you know, because back then we, our fight was up against landlords who were trying to burn people out of buildings so they could collect insurance, you know? And then the fight became against all the drug dealers, you know? And, and then the fight became against AIDS, and then the fight became for better housing for people, and so, these are all the experiences that got me here, you know? And I guess the most important thing is that never forgetting where I came from. You know, I come with a lot of wonderful ingredients. You do. <laughs> and those ingredients were handed down to me by, again, some very beautiful, wonderful people in my life. De La Pon Urban U, a small task with a large impact. CUNY students go to underinvested neighborhoods to document available resources and be the bridge between communities and the local government. Stay tuned. Step inside this college counseling office at Mesa Charter High School in Brooklyn and you'll find tenacious dreams of higher education. Students who understand college as a path to opportunity and adults who want to help them. But as director Melissa Lewis knows, getting in is just the start. For some young people, staying in can also be a real challenge. Money and finances, it's a struggle. So students have to choose, a lot of students have to choose, A, when they're choosing for a college, which college is going to be the best financially for their parents and for themselves long term, not just the first year, but after two, three, four years. Um, and if they can afford not just the cost of college, but books, a metro card, lunch, things like that, the other fees and expenses that come along with college. Something small as a metro card. Students will drop out of school because they couldn't afford a metro card. Mesa High School alum Imani McMichael explains the stress of paying for college felt overwhelming in some moments. I had to prioritize making hours at work because if I didn't have my hours at work, I couldn't even pay for like textbooks or supplies that I needed to, to be the best in the class or to pass the class or to do well in a class. So that was very, that caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety. When it comes to cost, at the City University of New York, there are options. Lucy McIntyre, the CUNY Financial Aid Compliance Manager, says students need to know what's available to them. Her first piece of advice, fill out your financial aid forms. The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. So how important is the FAFSA in terms of starting this process? It is your, your number one tool. 60% of our students go for free, 80% come out debt free. CUNY is the best bargain in town, okay, because you're going to get an, an Ivy League education at a public school cost. The education dollar at CUNY can stretch with things like access to additional libraries and e-permit classes that let students take classes at different campuses within the university system. And there are also programs that can help cover the costs of those college extras. Some of our programs where we do offer a Metro card for students, okay? Again, you would inquire to see if you're eligible. We do have food banks at each of our campuses. Financial pressure is certainly a big challenge for a lot of students, but it's not the only issue. There's also the social and emotional adjustment to college life. I think navigating the different um, the different offices, just the world of college is a shock to the system of a lot of students when they go off to school. Even things like making friends, right? The pressure already feels real for this high schooler, especially, she says, as the first in her family to go to college. For me to like go to college is like a really big deal for me and my family. So it's just like a lot on me, but 
I know I'll get through it. Denise Maybank is the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at CUNY. She explains there is a big support network for students on campus. It is quite vast. It really is in terms of being certain that you have the supports for your academic success, whether that be tutoring or advising or the things that will allow you to find out more about the necessary behaviors for college. I call them the NBCs. It's the things that allow you to understand how you navigate through college. And so there's that set of things. But there is also that space in which you have to function. I call them the essential needs, whether it be your housing security, your food security. So where should a college student go to get that help? The first thing you need to do is find that student affairs office. Find those folks, because even if it's academic, they can point you in the right direction because they'll know what you need. We are in this together. You are not alone. You are wanted here. You are welcome here. And you are going to succeed from here. Back at Mesa, college applications are underway. And Melissa has a reminder for students. It's about learning how to network. It's about learning about yourselves, what you like, what you don't like, your strengths, your weaknesses, building up your skills, being able to talk in front of people, have, making relationships with your other peers, with your professors, being able to join clubs, study abroad. College just isn't about books and getting a degree. It's so much more and it'll actually help you grow as a person. For Urban U, I'm Carol Ann Riddell. A Civic Innovation Fellow is someone who goes through our program, who learns a 101 data analytics boot camp, and is hopefully the future of uh, civic technology. Beta NYC has worked with CUNY since 2015 to help map parts of the city. I want them to be seen in any kind of work that they do in the future, and I want them to take these tools to whatever job or whatever life path they go on to. Kinji Donald was one of the interns mapping data in Bushwick. So we have this map right here and we're going around the area looking at the different amenities such as benches, trash cans and lamps to see what may need fixing in the area. Kinji's job? To look for inequities in public structures starting at this public housing complex in Bushwick. When we look at them, we take into account first their condition. You know, is it damaged? Does it need fixing? Is the paint messed up? After that, we take into account what it has. So for example, a bench, whether, whether or not it has a backrest or armrest and what material it may be made of. Kinji made note of what he saw, then uploaded the info to OpenStreetMap, where it became available to the public. First, it serves the purpose of people being able to see more in detail what is in the area and what the area has to offer. Additionally, it helps when certain areas may need more amenities. You know, if there's not enough trash cans in the area, or if things need fixing, like the, all the benches are damaged, you know, the seating is messed up, it might need to be fixed. Although it might be a small task that we're doing, it has a larger impact on the New York City community because we are going to underdeveloped communities where sometimes their voices are not heard. And we're here to kind of be the bridge between these communities and the local government of New York City. We report on what kind of resources are available for these communities. For Beta NYC, the data that's recorded will help in fighting public inequities through the nonprofit's project, Mapping for Equity. We want to create more equitable spaces, meaning that we want to see underinvested areas be invested in. Beta NYC continues to give CUNY interns the space to explore a future career while aiding the community. I want them to feel empowered in their space and that they have a route to actually advocate for their communities. I think to see the fellows grow is something that is so rewarding to me. To see them being invested in the public realm is really important to me. They're future designers. I feel like they hold such key perspectives on what the city needs, and I want them to be making the decisions in the future. Although we're not required to 
go to the community members to get feedback, they do come to us and they're interested in what we're doing. They tell us a lot more about the space that we're mapping because they've been longtime users of this space. They'll tell us if, if their child feels safe in it, if it's accessible for them, if there is something wrong, if there is hazardous, which I think is really memorable for me because I can see the impact already. The community feels like they have a voice through us. I would say we're just serving the public realm, you know, things that the public will use, benches, water fountains, anything that you may interact with in your day to day. We're trying to improve it and make sure you have everything you need. For Urban U, I am Joshua W. Josing. And that's a wrap. For more episode highlights and sneak peeks into our upcoming stories, meet us on our social media platforms. Thank you for watching these stories from the largest university in the nation, the City University of New York. Thank you.